Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Life Coach Wendy Dillard here. Today is Friday, December 29th, 2017. Our last official live podcast of 2017. How exciting is that? I mean, considering how many podcasts we've been doing in the last month or so, which have just accelerated. I mean, I, I can't believe, first of all, that we've got that many done in December. And second of all, I can't believe 2017 is over. Can you? Not really. It, it's been an amazing year, an amazing ride. And I think I was just contemplating it the other day. You and I just barely met over a month ago, and I've yeah. already done 20 shows with you. I know. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just crazy. That's absolutely crazy. But we're glad that you joined us for your Daily Dose of Happy today. If you do happen to be listening live, we will especially encourage you to call in today because we're going to do a review of 2017 from a Law of Attraction perspective. In other words, what were the really great things that happened in our lives or even in in the, the, the national life, so to speak, in 2017? And if you have anything you want to contribute, we would love to hear it from you as well. We know so far um, we're, we're still building up the live broadcast portion of our audience. The 99.9% of it is actually podcast listeners who listen to the recordings, which is great. We love you guys. Um, but if you do happen to be uh, among the single digits who are currently listening these days, well, we'd love to have you call in, 860-264-5432. And, oh, i got to tell you, Wendy, I, I forgot to tell you before we started the show, I was looking at the analytics again today, and we have hit a new high in terms of how many people are listening to the full show each time. Right now, okay, as drum roll. drum roll, there we go. <laughs> as of the month of December, for all the people who have played some or all of a podcast, ninety-one percent have played the entire podcast. Ninety-one percent. I mean, I couldn't wow. believe it when I saw that number today. Thank you, listeners. Yeah. Yeah, Listening. thank you very much. It, it, it's captivating your attention, which we're thrilled. Yes. That's what we do this for. Because the whole point of the Daily Dose of Happy is to give that Daily Dose to people and to, to give it to ourselves, too. It's a gift both ways. And so to know that people are receiving it and like it, wow, that's a win. That, that, that's, that's, there's my first win for 2017 that I want to touch on, the fact that people are loving the show enough they want to listen to the whole thing. So thank you, listeners. So we have it for 2017, now we want more of that in 2018, because we want to know that we're making an impact and we're doing something that matters. And we also want to share it. We want people to, more and more people to have this, because I just try to imagine what happens when thousands and then tens of thousands and then millions and tens of millions of people start hearing this every single day, making it part of their routine. I just imagine what happens with society as a whole when people are just getting happier and happier and happier. I mean, it boggles the mind all the different ways that our society gets better just because of that. So this is like, this is a really important thing going on. Thank you so much for contributing to it. So let's Thank get... to everyone. Yes, yes, absolutely. So I, I'm going to touch on, I, I'm enlisting at number two, but it's really my number one for the year, which is that this year was a huge, 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 huge growth for LOA today. And in order to put that into perspective, I started actually counting plays in November 2016. I didn't have a good way to do that before then. So I don't really have a good record of what happened for plays between when we started in September 2012 and November of 2016. However, based on what we saw from actual plays in November and December 2016, I can pretty much assume that before that was fairly similar because for November and December 2016, we had a grand total of 94 plays. So chances are the ones before that were probably fairly similar to that, I would say. Wouldn't you say? I mean, that that just seems like a logical conclusion to draw. And then uh, Joel, unfortunately, had to leave the show for a bit in April. Just as we were beginning to ramp up, David comes on board. He's my co-host from April through, well, currently today, but he was the the only co-host I had on a weekly basis until November. And during that period, the increase, in, in, the, the um, how do you say it? The ramp up increase, is that the way to say it? To the point yeah, where, sure. yeah, to the point where in September, instead of having 100 listeners, we had over 1,000 listeners. By November, 
a thousand listeners was over three thousand. For December, we're on our way to four thousand. It's just been this gigantic increase, and that's actually what motivated me to bring, to contact you and bring you on. I was so thrilled when you came on. Same thing with Cindy Chavez, with Tom Wells. Joel came back, which was wonderful. Um, David, of course, doing the uh, continuing to do the show with me on Sunday. So, I mean, I, it was just this crescendo for LOA today, and after four. And a half years without having any kind of crescendo, all of a sudden to have a crescendo like that was like, whoa, oh my goodness. So that's my number one for the year right there. Well, and obviously me being a part of the show is definitely one of my big somethings for 2017 that I'm so appreciative of. Well, that's fantastic because that means it's good for both of us and I love that. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad it's for good for all of us. This is just, this is just really, I, when I first started doing this with Louise, I never really expected it was going to go anything like this at any time. I thought I'd just be doing it for fun for the rest of my life. Just just to see what's happened this past year is has staggered any expectation I ever had. So I don't know, I'll probably keep saying that throughout the show, but it, I just had to say it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I hope if you know your original intention or your thought was that you would just do this for fun for the rest of your life, I hope it continues to be fun. For oh, the rest me too. Of the time you choose to do this. Well, I can tell you this. It is actually, as hard as it is for me to believe this, it has actually become more fun. <laughs> and I didn't think that was Yay! possible. <laughs> but it actually is more it's, fun than it was before. So, wow. Anyway. Well, if fun is good, more fun must be better. That's right. right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would hope so. <laughs> so. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, so what else has been really like a, a, a big, you know, a, a good thing that happened for you in 2017? This, now, this is like a, a, a very non-tangible, but to me, it's so significant. I know that it was within 2017 that I got to the point when I would ask my inner being a question. I stopped second guessing myself. Mm. So when I ask a question and I get a yes, go for it, I just do. I don't go, well, but is it really, well, should I ask again? Well, what about, I mean, to me, I had been a second guesser for so long in my life, and I know one of the things that I really wanted to achieve is where when I got the answer that I was seeking, I would just follow the guidance without question, and i got to tell you, I've been doing that most of this year, and this year has skyrocketed for me mm. in terms of having the ease and the flow that I know law of attraction can bring because I'm not putting doubt into the equation anymore. I'm not, that's what second guessing is. It was doubting. And I was a huge doubter from way back. Thank you, Mom. She taught it to me well. She's still <laughs> doubting. But I jumped off the doubt train. And now I'm just following the guidance as it comes. That is a huge win. What a fantastic win. I mean, it, any time that we do things that – amount to personal growth for ourselves, it's a it's a big win. When it's something as significant as that, because yeah, letting go of old patterns, that's it's hard to do sometimes. And you did it. And not only did you do it, but you got terrific results out of it. I mean that's that's like win, 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 win. It's like being in the win, win, win echo win. chamber. <laughs> <laughs> it is so big. And you know, it almost makes me go, What was I waiting for for so long? <laughs> yeah. But you know, it, it, it took until it took, and finally, I think I was tired of the merry-go-round of what it feels like inside my head of second-guessing. Mm. Yeah. When, I, when I would start second-guessing, it's like no matter what answer I got, I would second-guess that too, and it would cause me to go nowhere, and I was really tired of non-movement. And so I thought, what do I have to lose? So if I take action on something where I get a yes and I'm wrong – Okay, well then, then whatever result then comes will give me some new information and I'll ask a new question. But I gotta tell you, the majority of the time when I hear a yes, it has been spot on. I mean, I can't think of one that hasn't been. There probably wow. has been, but I can't think of one. If, if it was, it was so insignificant, it doesn't even count. <laughs> well, that certainly makes it easier when the, 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 the clues you're getting, when the, the tips that you're receiving and you, you just go with them and act on them, and they turn out to be right, 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 right. That's got to be reinforcing, because I know that would be scary for me the first time I'm trying something like that. In fact, I can't say I've really tried that. Well, that's not true. Actually, one of my wins this year is very similar to that now that I think about it. 
uh, because uh, you and I have a, a common trait. We're, we're very much planners and detail people. And for me, that included trying to map out the entire you know, plan for any project I was doing, including LA Today. And what happened, especially in the last six months of 2017, is I just stopped doing that. I just said, oh, to heck with it. You know, I, I, I'm, anything I'm planning isn't going to work anyway because it hasn't been working. So let's just have fun. And when I did that, all of a sudden everything took off. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of similar, really. Just, you know, it, it's not so much getting messages and responding to them. It's more like letting the universe take over the marketing plan. And not that I don't try to do any marketing. I mean, we have a little marketing group for our team and so forth. But that's more about learning, you know, taking the baby steps to encourage the bigger steps to come along from from the law of uh, law of attraction from the universe, but really, it's all about leaving it to the universe and leaving it to the source energy, leaving it to God to say, "Okay, here we go, mm-hmm. buckle up, we're about to ride." <laughs> That's exciting. That's yeah. very exciting. It is. It is, and it, it's it's been a transition. It's been. I think what has to happen is you, you kind of have to hit bottom. I mean, and there are different kinds of hitting bottom, if you know what I mean. I mean, obviously, a really bad kind of hitting bottom is like you go broke or you get really sick or, you know, you lose a job or, or you know, something like that. Been there, did all of those. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not the only kind of hitting bottom. Other kinds of hitting bottom are like with with this kind of thing that I'm talking about here, I just got tired of trying to do it. I got tri- tired of trying to solve the problems. I said, I've had enough of that. I'm done. I just, I just can't do so it finally, anymore. So you finally gave up. I gave up. Yeah, and that, that's a form of hitting bottom. I hit bottom, and all of a sudden, boom! It took off. <laughs> it's that's just, great. it's one of those amazing great. phenomena. The more that I see, both in myself and in the stories that my co-hosts tell me, Joel has been telling me stories about hitting bottom since we started doing the show together. You would think that I, it would have taken by now, but no, it took me a while to get to the point where I said, okay, yeah, let's just go with the hitting bottom part and let it go from there. But he's been... That's right. We all, we all have our own bottom. Yeah, we do. And he's been telling me for the longest time that the best times of his life were the times he hit bottom. At first, I didn't believe him. At first, I thought he was just crazy. Now I, I understand what he's talking about, and he's right. But it seems weird to say, especially if you've had really rough stuff, when you hit bottom, that's the best time of your life. I mean, that, that's when you're at the most miserable part of the life is what it seems like. But his point well, is, everything goes up from there. The wording, I wonder if the actual wording is not that it was the best time of his life, but it was the circumstance that he is the most appreciative for. This is true. The most reverence for, the most honoring, because he rep- recognizes how pivotal yes. that experience was for him. Yeah. Yep. That, that that's probably a more accurate way of saying it. You're right. But um, yeah, he's definitely a champion of of uh, the stuff that is the hardest to go through is the stuff that makes us grow the best and leads to the most amazing stuff following it. You know, after it happens, and. He's right. That, that's usually what happens. So I agree. I mean, I went through major financial hardships in my life, things that almost broke me to the point of, like, almost nervous breakdown kind mm. of financial difficulties. And out of that will come, has come some of the wins I've had in 2017. Now, the, the bottom wasn't in 2017. The bottom was a long time ago. Mm-hmm. But with small incremental steps, I have been reaching for more and receiving more. And it was about 11 or 12 years ago that I set a financial goal when I found out how much my boss made at a couple companies ago. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, my God, I can't even imagine what it would be like (laughs) to make that much money. You know, what kind of lifestyle would you have and what could you be able to afford? So... As I start, I will tell you what some of my financial wins have been this year, but like in November of 2016, my air conditioner went out. Mm. And I'm in Texas, and air conditioner, major importance. Oh, yeah. Wendy loves it cold, so I like it frigidly cold. So my AC (laughs) is a big deal to me. I live in a story house. I had two units. I had to get rid of both units to make the big one fit. So long story short, I know people are going to freak out when I say the numbers, but $22,000 is what I spent on my new air conditioner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I had no idea how that was going to be paid off. I used two uh, credit cards and maxed them both out by using, you know, those bank transfer checks. Right, right, yeah. Where you get, like, really good promotional interest rates. Yep. But you still have to pay an upfront thing. And so I knew I was paying, like, $700 up front mm. just to use these wow. promotional checks. And I set the goal that I'd pay it off in a year, even though that was even a quicker turnaround than what my promotional checks required. Mm-hmm. I had no idea how I was going to come up with an extra $22,000. But I paid them off one day short of a year. Wow. That is a big 2017, hello, what an awesome win I've had. Yeah. And I didn't really know how that happened. (laughs) Um, But I think I announced on a couple shows ago that I reached that financial salary that I had always desired and wondered what would it be like Mm -hmm. if you asked me on the show, so what did it feel like when you found out you, like, reached that goal? And I said, normal. It felt normal, yeah. It felt normal, and it felt normal because it didn't happen overnight. It happened incrementally in small little steps where I was getting more overtime and then my – my salary would go up and I'd get more overtime and my salary would go up and I'd get more overtime. And that must have been how I paid for my air conditioner. You just didn't notice. But, yeah. I mean, I just wasn't noticing. But each month I, w- I set a target for how much money I wanted to pay off on the AC that month. And somehow I always managed to pay that amount or a couple hundred dollars more. And that's how I ended up paying it off I, one day before a year. And that was like, oh, my God, that was so amazing to me. And what I recognized also is that I've had a desire for so long to be in a position that when I wanted to buy something big, I didn't have to think twice. I could just do it because either the money was available already in my checking account or I had it in my savings. Or I knew, like with the case of the air conditioner, I could just put it on credit and I'd pay it off with minimal interest. Because I hate paying interest, by the way. <laughs> um, and so I didn't know how that would happen. But I, for years, one of my goals has been to be in a position to buy whatever I wanted without feeling I couldn't do it. Because I got to tell you, for all the years I said, oh, I can't afford that, I can't afford that, I can't afford that. Every time I said those words, a part of me felt like I was dying. Mm, yes. I knew that saying I can't afford it wasn't who I really was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I knew that I was believing something that was a lie. And I didn't know how to turn it around, except I'd been focusing on bigger things and bigger things. And I would start it, – it, this is an odd way to do money. Um, I don't necessarily recommend it, but this is what worked for me. If I bought something and I put it on credit, but I had something where it was no interest, and then I had so much time to pay it off, I always paid it off in that much time or less. Okay. And I started buying bigger things and bigger things and bigger things where, again, no interest. I bought the thing on sale, which, you know, that's the thing that just makes the the purchasing of it that much sweeter. <laughs> of course. And then I'd pay it off in like less time than what was necessary, you know, before the interest rate would accrue. Mm-hmm. But I noticed that every time I bought a bigger and bigger and bigger thing, it was stretching my belief in obta- obtaining more money. Mm. And so that's one of the little ways that I say it happened for me in incremental steps. And Somewhere after I had paid off the air conditioner, um, because first I had paid off a second mortgage, and then I paid off the air conditioner, and now this lump sum for, like, the month of December didn't have a place it had to go. (laughs) And I did something amazing. I opened up a Roth IRA. Oh. Just because. Money, here's how I think about it. Money that just sits because you have a place to park it. And it'll work for you. Mm-hmm. And to me, like, you know, I have a 401K with my biz- with my, my job, et cetera, but this was like just an extra. 
And I'm like, oh, my God, I did this extra thing. That, to me, is a huge win in 2017. Oh, it's gigantic. I, I, it's absolutely. Gigantic. I, I, yeah, so my big three financial wins is I, I hit my big financial goal for how much money I make in a year. I paid off a $22,000 air conditioner, and I opened up a Roth IRA. That jazzes me. <laughs> yeah, and it should. I mean, bravo. That's fantastic. Thank those you, those are some you, you. big, big wins. I mean, you deserve a lot of credit for that. You deserve to reach around and pat yourself on the back for those because those are really good. Woo-hoo, I'm doing it right now. All right, very good. patting myself on the back. All right. And simultaneously, in 2014, I set the next financial goal, even though I hadn't even met the, the previous one. Really? Yeah, so I already know what the next financial goal is, and it's uh, two and a half times bigger wow. than the first one. And I just, my gut says I'm going to have this one lobbed off this year in 2018. Oh, oh I love it. Momentum is growing. Momentum is growing. And the more we talk about it, the more we stir the energy. And even just now on this show, I've spent, what, maybe five minutes talking about how exciting it is mm-hmm. to do all this stuff financially. So I'm, I'm like adding more fuel to building my wealth. Oh, yeah. And the Fun thing is, I don't have to know how it's going to occur. Right. Because I sure as heck didn't know how any of these other things were going to occur. (laughs) That's right. But I set up in motion. I felt into what it would feel like. I love to play with spreadsheets. So, like, I would play with, well, if I added an extra $100 a month, what would this look like? Or what if I did $500 a month? Mm -hmm. And I'd say, I can't afford that. And I'd say, can you really not just put it down there and see what happens, you know? Mm -hmm. And then it's like, as the month would come, I'd say, okay. What's available now? And I go, oh, there's $300 available extra that I didn't even know would be extra. <laughs> and I just, it, it, it's all a game to me. Money is a game. And right now I am winning. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the whole thing about doing it for five minutes, I as soon as you said that, I got to thinking about some of the things that Abraham, through Abraham Hicks, has told us about how long it takes to get momentum going on a new request, on a new thing that you're trying to attract. And uh, the, 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 tell me if I got the numbers wrong. The numbers I remember are you need to focus in a positive way on something for at least 17 seconds to get the momentum started. If you can do it for, I think it's 64 or 68 seconds, then it really gets it going and, and you know what's going to happen. You did it for 300 plus seconds. So, I mean, you, you just created an avalanche. It's 17 seconds when you focus on something for 17 seconds. Law of attraction already will bring you another thought matching whatever you've been focusing on for those 17 seconds. If you continue up to 34 seconds, you'll get another law of attraction thought dropped in. Go another 17, you get another thought. Go another 17, you get another thought. So now you have four four 17-second segments. And when you've done it for that long, that's less than 70 seconds, people. When right. you've done it for that long, you actually have started to tip the balance to move it out of just a thought into physical manifestation. Is that what it is? Okay. So 68 seconds is, is now it's, it's moving toward physical manifestation. Okay. Yes. Uh, all I knew is the first time that I heard that, it felt overwhelming for me because this was many years ago and I had trouble getting myself to feel happy for one second. So that just seemed, 68 seconds seemed like a mountain to climb. Today, it's an entirely different fe- feeling, but at that point, I was, I still didn't believe that I could actually move my emotional set point. I didn't think that was possible for me to do deliberately. I thought that just, you know, happened by the winds of fate. So that, that's why it seemed so difficult at that time. But it does kind of point out that even when we're working on something like 17 seconds or 68 seconds, it can seem sometimes like it takes a while. It can seem like, wow, that's a long time. It's kind of like, you know, how long can you hold your breath underwater? Well, actually not as long as perhaps you might have originally thought. It, it doesn't, it, it, pretty soon you, you start noticing it. Well, in kind of the same sense, trying to stay in that high place, if you're not used to it, it can be kind of the same kind of exercise. And the one good piece of news is that the more that we do it, the more that we focus on trying to get to feeling good and, and, you know, whatever high, whatever the highest level we can get to, stay there for a while and then maybe try to get to the next level and so forth. The more that we do that kind of thing, the more it becomes easier to focus on something for 68 seconds or even 300 seconds like you did. <laughs> so do you want to know what I think is the best way 
to have the seconds go constantly without you having to pay attention to it. Okay. Share it with a friend. Yeah, absolutely. When you talk about something with somebody else and you're just wanting to, like, share an idea and you're not looking at your watch going, well, have I stayed on this subject 17 seconds yet? <laughs> just like I did by sharing it here on the show with you. Right. I wasn't looking at the clock. That's true. I was just sharing something just to share it. And I do this in my own personal life. If I want to ramp up something, I call a friend who I know has a belief system that will support me and celebrate with me uh-huh. and join their energy with mine. Okay. And so, honestly, I've been doing that as much as possible with the show because I know if I can share it with you, you get excited with me. Mm-hmm. And I know if I'm sharing it on the air, then people listening today as well as in the future are going to add their energy to the thing that I'm talking about. And I know that I'm getting more airtime, even if it's not physically during our live show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that's true. That is energetically boosting whatever I'm talking about. Yep. Yep. That makes so, sense. That makes total sense. I mean, obviously, any time that you're trying to focus on anything, especially something positive, it's so much easier when you do it with somebody else. I discovered that very early on doing the podcast. It's much easier doing it with somebody else than trying to do it yourself. In fact, I don't think I ever tried to do it with LOA today. I had another podcast that I was doing for a while, and I did try to do it there, and that's like pulling teeth. I mean, it's like watching grass grow, trying to do it by yourself. But but when when you're doing it with somebody else, it just flies right by. I mean, that's always the thing, right? At the end of every show, oh, my God, I can't believe the hour is up. That's the way it usually goes. So absolutely, I totally endorse what you're saying. It's so much easier well, when you do it with I, somebody else. And I notice oftentimes after our show, like within a couple hours after the show, whatever we had just talked about, feels bigger inside of me and and I start to get new ideas and that's how I know that I'm spinning great ideas that then turn into the beginning of physical manifestation when we get off the get off the air that's true because so often after a show I tend to get I'm not sure how it, it feels to you exactly but to me I tend to get like a, a kind of a tingly sen- sensation inside that just it, it lingers for like a half an hour, an hour after the show, it just sticks around for a while. And I'm not even sure what that means, but I like it. (laughs) But you like it, hey, as long as it's good, go for it. it. Let it keep keep rolling. Yeah, I mean, there are times after a show, I have so much energy, I can't sit. I have to get up and walk around and do something, and I don't even know what it is I'm going to do, but i got to do something. (laughs) (laughs) So do you have another something you want to celebrate for this year? Let's see. Um, Actually, one of the things I want to celebrate is something that I have planned for next year. Because this year, and you were part of this, this year I set the goal of having one million plays of the podcast for 2018. Mm -hmm. And the reason that's what I consider to be a win is – up until this year, I would never have dared to do that. I would never have dared to set a goal that high. It would have been, it would have terrified me to set a goal that high. But this year, I didn't, it wasn't even terrified, wasn't even in the equation. It was like, well, yeah, let's do it. It was excitement. It was, whoa, let's go. <laughs> so in 2017, you expanded the what is possible. Very much so. Yeah. That is a great thing. Yay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it is a great thing. And (laughs) and it's it's one of those things where, well, it it goes along with something that, um, let's see, where were we talking about this? Was this on the show? It may have been, uh, last night, uh, Louise and I had dinner with two new LOA friends here in Connecticut uh, that we just met. Um, And it was really great. We had a wonderful time. And I think... This may have happened during that conversation. In fact, I think it was Louise, actually, who brought it up. Um, she was talking about how breathing is so uh, intrinsically tied into anything that feels good. And the reason for it is actually physiological in that when we experience stress, it is always accompanied by inadequate breathing. And when we breathe deeply, that removes stress. So stress and deep breathing are actually incompatible with each other. They cannot exist within the same space. 
So translate that over to something like setting a goal as high as that goal was. When I, when you and I were talking about that, I remember feeling, for lack of a better word, breathy, feeling like, oh, wow, and I'm breathing, and I'm breathing. I remember that. And I think what happens is when you're doing some, not hyperventilating, you don't want to do that kind of thing, but when you're doing a lot of deep breathing as you're getting into something like that, I think you're actually enhancing it. I think you're making it easier to get into tune with that higher vibrational level. And that's what occurred to us last night when we were talking, that the breathing plays a major role in getting into that that high vibrational place. And, you know, you can do it either way. You can either allow it to just happen and then you notice, oh, my gosh, look at the deep breaths I'm taking. Or you can take deep breaths, which will then get you into better feeling thoughts. Yes, yes. Because you're right, it's better to start with the breathing and make that a platform, a platform for jumping up to the higher level. And it makes it so much easier. I mean, either way works. They do. Because just like the, what I shared with you for a, a few moments ago, mm -hmm. I realized that while you were talking, I was breathing very deeply. And I went, oh, that conversation actually got me into a place where I was, you know, opening my diaphragm and taking in more air. Oh, and yeah. So it's like, huh, son of a gun, because I tend to breathe very shallow. We all do, and it's one of the reasons why people recommend meditation. Meditation is predominantly about focusing on deep, continuous breathing. I mean, there's other things that people do in meditation as well, but that's like the primary thing that all the meditation te techniques have in common. You've got to breathe deeply and calmly and fully and, and just breathe and breathe. Well, if it works for meditation, why not for the rest of our lives, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I'm ready to share my next one. Can okay. Go? Yep, go for it. All right. So I knew that in October when my birthday happened, it was the 10-year anniversary of um, having to get a new driver's license because in Texas you have to get one every 10 years in person. Oh, I see. Versus mm -hmm. being able to just renew them online. Right. Which also meant I had to get a new picture, and mm -hmm. I hated my old picture. <laughs> so I was like, oh, please, please, please let this one be better. But it didn't dawn on me till like just a couple days before I went in to go get my license renewed that I would have to take an eye exam because that's mm. part of the on-site process. Oh, yeah. And I was thinking about that. And over the last 10 years, I got prescription glasses because on my own, I felt like my nighttime driving and my far-sighted driving didn't feel as safe, so I'm like, I'm going to get some glasses just so I feel like I'm seeing the signs and reading all the things better. Sure. And then, over time, all of a sudden, I didn't need them. And so then I went to the eye doctor, and I got a new prescription. And, and I've had probably three new prescriptions over the last 10 years. And the most recent one was from probably about a year and a half, two years ago, where I have no prescription in my left lens and I have a really teeny prescription in the right lens. Wow. And I have those in my sunglasses, which is when I drive with mm -hmm. my sunglasses on. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking, oh, this is a good thing because the vision test you do at the driver's license place is for your farsighted vision. Mm -hmm. And I knew my farsighted vision had improved greatly most recently. So as I went into the you know DMV, there was a huge long line. And I ended up being there two and a half hours, which, of course, when you walk in the door, you don't know how long you're going to be there. Right. But I had brought reading glasses and a book. Uh-huh. And when I was in the car, I got the, the guidance, do not read before you take the vision test. Oh. Uh -huh. And I thought about that. And I went, oh, my gosh, I'm so glad I'm listening to my guidance. Because what I know is that when I read for an extended period of time, my eyes get so um, cued in to the short-sighted vision, the near vision, that it takes me a, a time period, sometimes even an hour, to adjust to far-sighted vision. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so even though I was bored for two and a half hours, <laughs> it was like I'm following the guidance. Do not read. Don't, like, get my eyes set for the wrong kind of, you know, sight. So when I go up and it's finally my turn and I, I read all the letters and – the first row, she said, okay, read row five. And if I went, ba -da -da -da, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, it was really easy. Mm -hmm. Then she's like, okay, now read this other line. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, it was really easy. Then she goes, now read this line. I went, really? 
<laughs> and I went, hmm, okay, here's my best guess. And, of course, they were like threes and S's and fives and nines. They of all course. looked the same. Yeah, of course. And so I just, I went, here, I'm going to give it my best shot. But what I knew, or I recognized it afterwards, I had no resistance. Mm. It was a game to me. I'm like, I'm just going to give it a shot. And I literally said that out loud. So I read off all the letters and numbers. And she didn't say anything, and she's still a little typing. And I said, so how did I do? And she goes, oh, well, you got one wrong, but you can get one wrong. And I went, oh, my gosh, I don't have to have my driver's license tagged that I require prescriptive lenses. <laughs> and then I said to her, okay, now when we take my picture, I had a horrible one last year. So I said, please count to three, and I'll give you my best smile on three. Okay. So I said, one, boom, she snapped the picture. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, she was, I mean, I was serious when I said I'm going to count to three. But you know what? She looked at the picture and she goes, I think it looks good. Well, you know, people, other people always think your picture looks good, right? It matters to me. Oh, sure. But I looked at it and I went, that's a much better picture than I had last time. I can live with this one for 10 years. Okay. So to me, that whole thing was like a double win because I got a better picture and I didn't need prescriptive glasses, and my my eyesight got better. So there, there, those are three wins that kind of all work together that made me very, very happy. <laughs> very good, yeah. I mean, among other things, getting to the point where you didn't have to have that tag on the license about having a prescription lens, that's really fantastic. I mean, that means you'll... Because I, I like to make the decision what is needed for me, mm -hmm. just like... Over the years, I'm the one who decided I prefer to have glasses because I want to see better. Mm -hmm. And then I said I prefer my eyesight to improve because I don't want to have to rely on glasses. And oh, that, then my eyesight improved. And that's the best part right there. You made something happen that science says can't happen. You made your eyesight you know, improve. Every, <laughs> yeah, every time my eyes get better or worse or my near side division gets better or worse, or my far side division gets better or worse. It has not mattered what direction my eyesight goes. No matter what eye doctor I've had, do you know what they always say? What? Well, it changed because you're getting older. <laughs> yeah. You know, and here's my thing. You can't have it both ways. <laughs> when my eyes got better, you can't say, well, that just happens with age. And when they got worse, you can't say that that happens with age. It's like, no. This is what Wendy focuses on gets translated into my visual acuity. When I'm not seeing well, I need prescription glasses. When I start internally, spiritually, metaphysically seeing things with greater clarity, I stop needing a prescription. Now, I know that to be my truth. Mm. Doctors don't get it. Okay, I accept that. They have their job. They, I know what they're focused on, but I know what I'm focused on. Yep. And I'm focused on having clarity of vision. And when I have clarity of vision, it has been reflected in my eyesight, my physical eyesight. By the way, I love the play on words. You didn't intend it, but the play on words was that you were focusing on improving your ability to focus on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now I have the next one that just came to me right now because I just told the story how when I go from nearsighted vision where I've been looking through my readers for quite a while and then I want to transition to distance, mm -hmm. that there's a long time for my eyes to adapt. Mm -hmm. So what just came to me is I want adaptability where I'm like, what is it, um, nimble. Okay. Where I can do it so quickly, I can turn on a dime. I want my, my visual acuity to be able to, like, expand or contract with no time perception, where there's, like, imperceptible time in between. Because right now it takes a long time, but that's what I'm wanting for 2018, is where I get such clarity of vision, whether I'm looking close up or whether I'm looking far away, which means whether I'm looking at tomorrow or 10 years down the road. I want to have a vision of, I want to have the clarity for both what's happening tomorrow and in 
the short term as well as the long term. Very nice. I want, to be able, I want to be able to balance back and forth and back and forth and have that flexibility that it doesn't have to be one or the other. Very nice. I like that. That's good. Yeah. I, I actually have something similar, but okay. it's, a, it's a completely different take because my situation is different. I've had glasses since I was six years old, um, and it's for a variety of different reasons. I won't go into the whole history of it, but I will tell you that approximately, let's see, when was it? I'm going to say eight or nine years ago, something like that. Um, I noticed a significant reduction in my eyesight. I, I couldn't have told you exactly what it was, but I went to uh, get the checkup and they, they did some testing and found that I had macular degeneration in my left eye. And that I was effectively blind in my left eye and didn't realize it. And that's a bit of a shock because when you read the literature on it, what they tell you is if you're going to get it in one eye, and it, there are two kinds. There's, they call it the dry kind and the wet kind. I have the wet kind, which is the bad one. If you get the wet kind in one eye, odds are overwhelming you're going to get it in the other eye, which meant I was facing blindness. And on top of that, I was not in a good financial place, so I couldn't afford to do a whole bunch of eye doctor appointments, let alone all the expensive treatments they wanted to do. Well, the one thing I could find that was good is there is a vitamin combination that they have found through scientific study actually does um, help protect your eyesight. Um, it's especially good for the dry kind. There is some indication that it also helps with the wet kind, so I said, okay, well, I'll just do that because I, I can do that. That's like, you know... Twenty dollars a month or something like that, as opposed to you know all the amount of money I'd have to pay for doing the more expensive stuff, which could be thousands of dollars of stuff, and I didn't have the thousands anyway. So, <laughs> so I said, okay, I'll do this other one, and I stuck with it. I've, I've done it. I would even say religiously, I've done it faithfully every single day since then. Um, if a day comes along where, uh, for whatever reason, I don't have uh, my, my vitamin pills with me, I'll go out and buy some just to make sure that I never miss a day. So I've been you know, like clockwork doing it. And in the meantime, I've been doing two things. First, I have been really appreciating the eyesight that I still have in my right eye. Nothing like losing the eyesight in one eye to really appreciate the other eye, let me tell you. And as I, I'm out doing like my walks or, you know, if I'm driving or whatever, I was like, thank God I can see. And indeed, when I, I had to uh, get a new license when we moved from Virginia to Connecticut, took the eye test, of course, I couldn't see on the left eye. But as long as I wasn't going to be driving a tractor trailer, I'm okay. I can get the license with having one eye. That's good. And that worked. And so I was able to get my license. And I can drive just fine. I can see just fine. The only problem that I have of any kind is depth perception because you need two eyes for depth perception. So my depth perception is always a little bit off. But, you know, where driving is concerned, you just give yourself a little extra room and you're fine. And, I, you know, if, for instance, like I'm pulling into a parking spot or whatever and I'll wonder, geez, am I real close to the car? Louise says, you got four feet. You're fine. <laughs> so I give myself plenty of room even without planning to do it. So the bottom line is it's worked out really well. Now, I have a a, a little secret um, uh, thing that I'm trying to attract that I don't really go around talking about much because it's one of those things that science says you can't possibly do, and I, I don't really want to set myself up, so <laughs> so I just don't talk about it. But I have a secret dream of restoring eyesight in the eye that is suffering from the macular degeneration where the macula has basically been destroyed. And that's theoretically impossible. According to science, that well, can't be done. Theoretically or according to doctors? Ac well, th according to scientific theory, it's, it's impossible. Okay. And that's daunting. That's pretty daunting. That's, I mean, it's not a death sentence or anything like that, but it's pretty daunting. So... I've been going through a lot of trying to get myself into that feel-good place and just appreciating. And I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if I'll ever get it back. I haven't gotten to the point where I believe it fervently with all every fiber of my being. I'm sure if I can get to that point, it'll happen. But I haven't gotten there yet. And I, I just put it out there just saying, well, that's something I'm trying to reach out for for 2018. Don't know if I'll make it. But I do know is that between now and then and – Continuing on beyond that, I am going to be continuously grateful for the eyesight I have in my right eye. 
I am so glad for it. I celebrate it every day that I can think of and that every day that I can find time to do it. If I'm out in my walks, I'm celebrating the fact that I can see the blue sky and the yellow sun and I can see the green on the trees and I can see uh, the wildlife and everything else. And I just love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So I don't know if that's a 2017 victory other than, well, it is in one sense. It's a 2017 victory that by now I'm supposed to be blind and I'm not. I'm actually doing very well. You're doing great. And I even love the fact that you said, I really don't talk about this much. That's really awesome because if you talk about uh, something that's not working, you just get more of it. Oh, yeah. But the fact that you're choosing not to talk about it, and even the more you can forget about it, the better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and my little take, I'm not trying to coach here, but, you know, my little take on this, because I had something where my mom had emailed me some stuff about her physical condition and and she said, well, the doctor says this, and Dr. Oz says this, and Dr. Phil says this, and all the, all the doctors are in agreement <laughs> that it's, I'm supposed to have this horrible thing happen to me. Mm. And she's like, and I really want your take on it. Well, I haven't responded because I haven't had a, a chance to really sit down and give her a very thoughtful response. Mm-hmm. But my immediate response is doctors don't know everything. No, they don't. Science has not even been able to create instruments to measure everything. Nope. And most doctoring is done based on corpses and dead things and diseased things and not on healthy things. That's also true. So now that's just my own little something. No one has to believe what I just said, but that is the thought that I keep very prominent in my sphere of influence when I hear an eye doctor telling me, you're getting old, Wendy, and so your eyes are going to get worse. It's like, no, that's what you've been – I don't say this to him right? because I don't need the argument. But I think to myself, that's what you've been focusing on your whole life because you're an ophthalmologist, because you get paid to have people's eyesight gets worse. But what I know is everything on the physical level is a projected manifestation of what's going on inside of us. Mm-hmm. And the thing on the outside is there for us to get an idea. It's there for us to see a message, recognize a message, receive a message about something that we can change on the inside that we haven't been aware of or we don't know about. And so for me, if you heard what I heard my specific wording about the eyesight, to me, I know that my vision that is in my physical reality is only there as a message saying, hey, there's something going on on my internal reality where it comes to how I see things and my clarity of things. I've got some fuzzy clarity. Like if I'm looking in long-range view, I've got some fuzziness going on. Otherwise, I'd have 20-20 vision when it comes to farsightedness. And when it comes to things up close, That's where I need extra magnification when it comes to eyeglasses on the outside because when I'm, like, when I think from an internal with my eyes closed perspective and I think about things that are, like, happening in my immediacy, that, I will tell you, that is where I have very little clarity. It's very fuzzy for me. But you know what? I'm not thinking that's a bad thing. As a matter of fact, what just came to me right now like newsflash coming on in, is spirit has been allowing my eyesight to get fuzzy in the uh, nearsighted vision because it has caused me to make some new decisions of letting it go and giving up control to the universal manager. Mm, yeah. And as long as I can't control what's happening in my immediate world, I've been giving it up. I've been letting go, and it's really been a great thing. So what's coming to me right now in my understanding is as I continue to practice the letting go, my nearsighted vision is going to return because I will have created the practice that was necessary for me that losing my nearsighted vision actually was the catalyst to allow me to let go. Well, certainly we know just through our study of LOA, particularly listening to Abraham Hicks, but also the other teachers too, that the degree to which we're able to identify and release resistance is the degree to which we're able in general to enhance all of our deliberate 
attracting abilities. So certainly it makes sense that the more resistance we're able to release, the more likely we're going to release just the right resistance that enables eyesight to improve. And I would agree that it's not just eyesight. It's actually everything that we've talked about so far and all, you know, every goal that we've, we've talked about for 2018, they all have to do with letting go of the resistance so that it comes in. Because the only thing that keeps it from coming in is the resistance. I mean, I've learned that much now. I understand that part. It took me a number of years to learn it, but I finally got there. <laughs> and <laughs> once there, I don't want to leave it because now, I, okay, I got it. I got it. Now let's see. I, I got to apply this. I got to actually do it. Uh, and the doing it can be a little challenging at times because, I mean, from the very beginning, I I had the same problem over and over again. I don't know where I'm resisting. I don't know where I'm resisting. How am I resisting? Where is it? Where's the resistance in my body? Will somebody please point to the resistance in my body? Because I can't find it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and over time, as I've as I've explored and as I've uh, played in, in the realm of getting happier and so forth, I've noticed little times where, oh, I guess there is that little resistance there, and I'm letting that one go now. And I figure if I do that enough times, eventually it's all going to go away. So you know what is fascinating is as you were talking and you were repeating, where's the resistance? Where's the resistance? Where's the resistance? I'm thinking, oh, bless his heart, he kept adding more resistance because he was focusing on where's the resistance. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Instead of, and, and this to me what you just said was like, such a beautiful illustration of what all of us have done because we don't realize we're focusing on the negative because we really think we're focusing on how to fix a problem right? Um, and that we think that's a good thing instead of finding a resolution because fixing a problem focuses on a problem. Finding a resolution actually fixes the problem. Mm -hmm. It just literally, it's not the words. But it's when we use those words, we, if we actually match up our feeling behind them. Like if I say I, I'm trying to fix a problem, I, I, I know for me I'm really focused on there's a problem, there's a problem, there's a problem, there's a problem, and I'm trying to fix it. Mm -hmm. Versus well, there's a solution. I know there's a solution. For every problem there's a solution, and I love finding solutions because that's exciting. Mm -hmm. That's a very different energy. Oh, it is. And, and, it, and you're right. It's very normal. It's very common it's for us, for, for us mm -hmm. to, uh, to be looking for the problem because I know for myself, if, in order to get myself to the place where I'm ready to look at the solution, I, I know what the problem is. Otherwise, I don't even know what I'm looking for. <laughs> I don't know where to begin. <laughs> But if you don't find the problem, then you're right. You end up continuously focusing on the problem. And it's a strange thing. You're focusing on a problem and you can't find the problem. That That's like really, really weird. For me, that, that that's a very unusual thing. When I first ran into that with this LOA stuff, that was a first. It was literally a first. I had not had that before. Always I've been able to identify a problem and I couldn't do it. And I still can't always do it. And like you're pointing out, it's probably not a good idea for me to keep doing it. But nevertheless, that means I have to shift my whole paradigm about how I deal with problems. I have to say, screw it. I don't have to know what the problem is. I just go right for the solution. And like, whoa, that, that's a big shift. That, that's a tricky shift to make. And, you know, oftentimes we don't always realize what we're focusing on because just um, from how we've had things modeled to us in our life, it's easy to think that if you're focusing on, I've lost my keys, I'm trying to find my keys, my keys are missing, um, where are my missing keys? You know, we've all had the experience where we've lost something. Sure. But we don't always recognize that when we keep focusing on we've lost this thing, but you're really looking hard to find it because you've lost this thing, especially if we, you start getting aggravated or frustrated or if you're under a time limit because you've got to get somewhere and you can't find your keys. When you're focused on something that's lost, what we don't recognize sometimes is you cannot find something that is lost. Yeah, that's lost true. Lost things are lost. Yes. You can only find things that are findable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's you true. And, that's true. And I have really taken that concept to heart when I've had the awareness, because, you know, I don't always have the awareness, but when I do, I'll catch myself and I'll turn my words around and I, this is a fun example I did when I was married because my husband constantly lost his keys. and Or he'd constantly forget something. Like he would say to me the day before, Wendy, remind me I want to take 
this book with me when I go to such and such place tomorrow. <laughs> yep. You know, but he would put the reminding on me. Right, you know? like it's your responsibility. And, and then yeah. He'd, yeah, he'd head out the door, and sure enough, he would have forgot it, and I wasn't even around to remind him. And so then he'd come <laughs> home, and he said, I forgot it again. Mm-hmm. Because I'm always forgetting things. And yep. that was his mantra. I'm always forgetting things. Sure. And he goes, I'm, I'm, for, I'm forgetting. What's the thing I'm supposed to remember? I can't remember. I forgot it. I forgot it. And I said, okay, let's just try a new experiment and say, I'm going to remember. What is it I want to remember? And sure enough, as soon as he'd say, what is it I'm wanting to remember, it would come to mind. Mm-hmm. But if he'd stand there at the door and go, I know there, I'm forgetting something, I'm forgetting something, I'm forgetting something. Well, by the time he said the mantra three times, it was forgotten. <laughs> And he'd have to leave, and then when he came home, then he remembered. But then it was too late. Yep. And so one little flip, we went from for, the word forget to remember. And when he started practicing the phrase, what is it I'm wanting to remember, it always came to mind. Sure. Oh, yeah. Once you get the wording right, it, it, it starts working properly. And the other thing, too, is that when we can when, when we're having trouble – finding the solution because we don't know what the problem is, right? When we're having trouble finding the solution, we often forget about it, but that's something we can ask the universe to deliver to us. We can ask for it, please, hey, I I don't know what to do here. What's the solution? And I've been remembering more frequently than ever before to do that. I don't remember it all the time, but I'm remembering it a lot more than I was before. And I'm really hoping to do it all the time in 2018 or even the last few days of 2017 for that matter. But Learning you, to, to you just say, what's, what, what's, what, what's, what's the solution? Oh, I don't know what the solution is. Give it to me. <laughs> Please. I need it. <laughs> See, I'm a great solution gatherer. I gather solutions. That's me. Okay. I love- so you like collect them? Is this okay, like a I question you have? I just made that up, Walt. Th- those were just words I threw out there just for fun. Oh, really? But you know what? It feels much more, it feels much better to say, I'm great at finding solutions. I'm always finding solutions. And you know okay. what? As I say that, I can find evidence of that in my life where I have found many solutions. Yeah, I can see that too. Yeah. Simultaneously, if I say, you know what, I have so many problems and I don't know what to do with them, I can find lots of evidence for that to be true too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the one we're familiar with. <laughs> That's the one we know like the back of our hand. I mean, <laughs> So it's like... Which one feels better and which one is going to give us the better result? It's our choice. Oh, it's real clear which one is which. It's just learning the new habit. That, and that's really what it is. It's, it's an old habit that we're trying to replace with a new habit. And once we get that new habit going, all kinds of good stuff happens. So, so you know what I'm remembering right now? What's that? Is we want to remind our listeners how they can continue to hear us and subscribe. Speaking of habits, by the way, because we want them to continue the habit of listening to LOA today. So in order to pull that off, it's actually even easier than remembering to ask for the solution before you even look at the problem. It's simple. You go to LOAToday.net and you just click the button that says subscribe. And if you're on an iPhone, you can also just do it through your iTunes store. You can even do it through your podcast software. Just do a search on LOA Today. If you're on a Google Android or a Samsung Samsung Android or any other Android, just go to the Google Play Store. Again, search on LOA today. It's the easiest thing you've ever done. And once you've done that, then you can practice with us learning to look for solutions instead of problems. <laughs> Yay. And, you know, so I know we only have like a minute left, but we did not talk about you and I, whether we're going to do a show on January 1st or not, because it's a holiday. I, I think probably we'll let uh, January 1st be January 21st, but if we want to, we can do a, ho- uh, a January 21st podcast. I mean, what do you think? Mm, I'm just thinking since we're a drive time show, people are not going to be going to their jobs, so why don't we give everybody a holiday? Yeah, let's do that. We'll pick it up on, again on January 2nd. Sounds good to me. People are back in their jobs, back in their routine, and they'll listen to us during their drive. So, Wendy, last time to say this in 2017, it's been a pleasure. I can't wait to do it again in 2018. It's been a great 2017. Happy New Year's to everybody. And to you, too. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye now.